Good morning, everyone. I'm Dustin from Hard Cruise Racing. Is your old work truck beat up, scratched up, paint flaking, and everything in between like mine is? Well, probably. Or it's not an old work truck. Uh, let me show you what I mean, okay? So, we come up here to the hood. You can see up here where, where the paint is just not happy anymore. We're starting to flake through that clear. So once this starts, and moisture is able to seep down inside there, this is where your major issues happen, okay? The chips out of your paint like this, this is where rust starts, okay? Rust doesn't just start. As a matter of fact, right there's a chip, and you can see where it's starting to rust inside of there. So you want to keep this sealed. So I'm going to show you a quick, easy, cheap way that you can do at home to keep this sealed. So over here hasn't been touched yet you can see it's dirty it's filthy but most importantly it is worn out the first thing we are going to do go grab your hose and some brillo pads okay so the first thing is with the hose when you spray it you're going to see what your end looks going to look like okay but we're, what we really need is brillo pads and i've already started over here and you're going to want to wet sand this okay so you don't want to do this dry like right now on here well this is even still wet you don't really want to do this dry okay you want to do this wet the reason for is when you do it wet it uh it doesn't pack the the brillo with the, any gunk that you're scrubbing off and it doesn't cut and bite just quite a, the same okay so it's just a nice you know we're going to scrub it we're going to keep going until everything's dull you can see on this side where everything is clean and yet dulled out you can see the little micro scratches in there and that's what our clear needs to bite into you can even see i start going down the door but you can really see the difference between where i've scratched and where i haven't scratched down here still has a gloss this up here's matte we want that matte look okay that's what we're going for um, this will allow the clear to bite in and really give us what we want and you can see as you scrub some of that clear is coming off that's that milky look you see right there now again, this is just to fix the clear, okay? If you got paint chips like this, those paint chips are still gonna be there, but they're gonna be sealed now. And now, I have a lot of chips all across my paint, okay? It just is what it is. This isn't going to fix those. This isn't gonna fix dents. This is just going to repair your clear, but it will make a major difference. Now, what I was saying about the water, if I go down here and I grab my hose, and I come to any panel, let's just say this panel down here, well, it's right here. This is good, right? So let's just say this hood. What's this hood going to look like when I'm done? Spray some water on there, okay? That's the difference we're going for. We're going to have a new gloss finish. So we're going to go from this to this. Now you see that even after I've sprayed that, if we look up in here, we can see that blemish right there. That's what we're trying to sand out, are these blemishes, okay? And you can feel it with your finger. It's because moisture is able to get underneath there now. And it's causing the, the paint to lift, it's causing other issues. But we need to sand that out, so that's what we're going for. Sand all these blemishes away and get some of this to sand out, so that way when we do take some water and we go across there, we don't see as much of it. And once we get to that depth, that's where we need to be to clear. Okay, so we're going to keep sanding all this down. Um, the other tool you're going to need is obviously go buy some clear from the store. If you want to make your paint satin or matte, this is the time and place to do it. But also you need some tape and maybe some paper. Uh, you can use computer paper or a big roll of paper if you have it. Just to tape off the windshield so you don't get any of that overspray on there. Or pieces like this if you don't want those sprayed with clear. Uh, it's also a good time to do your headlights. This is the same method we use to uh, to de-yellow headlights is to take a Brillo pad or some some uh, or some some sandpaper and sand those down to a smooth clear or well matte finish, and then spray those with crystal clear enamel. So I'm going to do my headlights while we're here because, as we see, even if we just sprayed those, I got a kink in the hose somewhere. Excuse me, hose. I would like some water. There we go. But if you look, if we just spray these headlights with some clear right now, it would actually improve them quite a bit. So now let's sand off all that gunk. Let's sand off, you know, those imperfections that we see in there. When we sand those off, we're going to have a much better look. And this is how you can use water to tell what we're going to get kind of outcome we're going to have water is like adding another clear so we add the water we look we say okay i don't want those imperfections i don't want 
that edge to be as raised on that chip so we're going to sand those down with the brillo pad and when we're done those raised edges are going to feather out that's what that's called is feathering and it's going to look a lot better now again if you want to do paint correction now is the time my paint has a lot of pearl in it um, it goes from a red to a maroon to a black uh, so i can't just simply do paint correction on this color okay you have to go through and repaint the whole section so you can spray those pearls back in but that's okay okay so looking here we can see i don't have any more blemishes in that area so that area is good this is where i sanded last night so i'm gonna keep working on this and i'll just show you as we go the little points where you need to work a little harder like up in here you can see that those oh look those do disappear with water don't they we can see where it's a blemish and when you respray the clear over that those are going to disappear or mostly so we can get in there a little more but they're mostly going to disappear we're almost good there so yeah this is how we start start brillo pad and some water again you can block sand it brillo pads the easiest things so it's just enough for what we need to do here well, I'm doing a terrible job of spraying clear over here. So I was going to come out real quick and just show you guys, like, how much it improves. But I'm doing a terrible job. But just quick, okay? Let's look at this spot here. Take some clear. Now, we're just going to do a mist coat right now, or what's called a tack coat, where you just lightly spray it. Then, in nor you know, normally when that starts to tack up, when that starts to dry a little bit, you go through and spray thicker. It's important to remember that rattle can is just thinned out paint. Okay, you can buy rattle cane from all sorts of company like House of Color, you know, like the high-end automotive supplier. You can buy their paints in rattle can, but it's thinned out more than what it is if you buy it normally. So you have to spray it thin, otherwise you'll get runs very quickly. So, looking up here where it's just terrible. I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to mist it right now, okay? You know, again, I might go back through later and spray a thicker coat if I decide this i didn't sand out all the way i decided i really didn't care that much um again this is a work truck we're just trying to make it look a little better especially from a distance and uh i really don't care you know i have enough chips everywhere that that's not really a priority now i am going to put graphics on this vehicle but we're doing cut vinyl graphics we have an industrial vinyl cutter so i just really want to get it to look better and as you can see that looks like a thousand million times better okay i'll even come up here um, I don't want to spray that up there, whatever. Um, let's just let's hit it quick. It's not perfect, but you step away from it a little bit, and it's gone. And I think that's the big point here, okay? We're trying to scuff the surface enough to, to take the paint or to get rid of that. Okay, if it's more perfect, if your surface isn't scuffed, then you have an issue where your clear might not stick. It might not take, okay? So especially like up in here, like you need the clear to stick. So you scuff everything that isn't messed up. That way when you come through with some clear, you know that's gonna stick down a little better, okay? And so I'm just gonna do this on the whole hood. Um, I did not do this like I normally would because I was trying to video some differences. But normally you'd obviously start here and spray it and spray it and spray it and then I change directions at a, at a 45 and I spray it again um, that's just so we know you have everything and you know you don't run it like I did right there but it's whatever okay the point is here's what it looks like after you scuff it you can see the scratch marks in there if you look really closely you can see the dullness and then you come back through and you spray your clear and it truly does repair so much okay now if you do something crazy like run it like i did right there let it dry completely come back through with that brillo pad scuff that back out and then spray it real lightly one more time but ultimately you can see the difference okay you can see the gloss difference now it's by no means a perfect hood so by no means a perfect truck but you can do this on every aspect okay for instance, I scuffed this door over here. You can see it's dull up there. Still a little shiny down here, but it's dull up there. But let's just, let's run down this body line quick. And this is just real light. I'm not blasting it. Honestly, I'm willing to do this to my truck right now. Like this, because it's an imperfect truck. I'm gonna put graphics on it. I'm gonna do other things. If I get some paint, 
on my handle, I don't care. If I get some paint on my window, I'll clean that off. But, you know, I want to be able to spritz this, step back, and let you guys see the difference. I mean, you've seen how bad it was. You've seen how rough it was when we started. And the point is, is that from a little bit of a distance, it's better. Now, when this is all done, if you understand wet sanding practices, um, and by that I'm talking about you know, going up to your 2,000, 4,000 grit, whatever, and, uh, you know, then obviously polishing it out, you can do that if you want a more perfect surface. This isn't going to give you the smoothest surface. You know, we're not spraying with a, a compressor. We're not spraying, you know, anything like that. We are just adding a little bit of clear over it. So it's going to be a little spackly. It's going to be imperfect. Um, the big thing is, is you want to spray at a far enough distance that it kind of fades into each other. Otherwise you'll have lines. You ever see those sprayed pickup trucks? Wow, look how bad that run is. Yeah, I screwed it up over here. You ever seen them pickup trucks where they paint them with rattle can they paint them like matte black because they think it looks cool and they have all those lines that go back and forth? It's because they spray too close or they didn't use enough paint. Okay, the reality is, is you need to, it's going to take a lot of paint if you want to completely spray something. With what we're doing, where we're trying to improve the situation and not make a perfect surface, it's okay. I still need to scrub that up there. I wanted to show you guys the clear first, just so I can get this video posted. But we step back a little ways, and that's a hell of an improvement. I mean, that's that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a hell of an improvement, not necessarily a perfect outcome, but a hell of an improvement, and that's what we have, okay? So, so it's normal, especially being a young guy. Like, when I was in high school, um, I had a beat-up old truck and a beat-up old Crown Vic, and it was normal for us to do dumb things like this on it. And the big thing is, is take your time. If you don't know how to pair colors, um, take it more cautiously, okay? Because, like, I can't stress enough how terrible, like, a matte black Jeep going down the road with, like, bright pink grill and wheels and mirrors and all these stupid little parts that don't blend together, how bad that looks, okay? And so I have to use the example here of my Chrysler 300C because everything on here is rattle can, okay? But it's where you put the color and it's how you put the color. We knew that we were going to keep the cream color for everything else. So we had to be picky and choosy about what we did with the two-tone. Because we have it both on the sides and up on top. And so we had to pick a color that looked good with the cream and didn't clash. Okay. Now, I'm not big on lilac, which is what they call this color. I'm not big on it. Okay. But look where we put it. Okay. Especially on the front. Not only do we have the two-tone line, which goes all the way around. I also accented it with, where, where's my finger, here, and then you have to bring that up on the hood, so we accent it with a stripe that goes back into the two-tone top, and we have this hook, Whoa. I about killed myself on some stuff, we have the two-tone, and that again wraps all the way around the back, I'm walking into stuff. But that, but that wraps all the way into the back. And so for every aspect of the car, from every corner, every side, you do get the two-tone and it's not clashing. And in the two-tone, we did paint splatter effect. Because again, I'm not huge on the lilac. And it, it's going to be a 90s design. We still need to put graphics. But when we're talking about putting graphics, we're still talking about what colors clash, what colors go good together, and how they can be incorporated without taking away from the look of the car. So, rattle can stuff, have fun, you know, go buy a, a shitbox car and fix your clear and paint some parts. Um, even with that one, the wheels are also rattle canned. So, just take your time. You have to scuff it for starters. You have to clean the surface. Use soap, or, soap and water if you want, or get like an acetone or mineral spirits and or alcohol pads, a little alcohol pads, and wipe everything down to get off all the grease and everything. And then just paint the dang thing. See that in the background? It looks better and it just cleared it, okay? So get out there, build cool things. Don't be afraid to build cool things. There's a lot of haters on the internet right now. Don't worry about them. We've been building our own things for years and, and the general public just doesn't understand. Now your car is just out there in the open for more of the general public and more of the fake car guys that want to try to talk down on other people.
Don't worry about them. They're stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. I'd rather see you rattle can your parts in your garage than see them buy some shit from overseas and spend thousands of dollars to have somebody else paint it. So build cool things, have fun, and most importantly, have a good day.